the Apostle Paul, the former murderer, the former persecutor of the church. He has an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ in his resurrected state on the road to Damascus. And what happens? He's blinded by the light. He's knocked off his high horse of pride thereof. And he gets a revelation of the risen Savior. He goes from obeying the law, the rules, religion, and he flips over and he ends up being led by the Spirit, and he has a relationship with the risen Savior. Romans 12, 2. I think he has kind of a, a little bit of expert understanding on these matters, and we're going to be quoting from a lot of passages where Paul writes with the fiery finger of the Holy Spirit, with his first century pen dipped in the blood of the Lamb that now is written on the tables of our human hearts as we hear the word. Romans 12, 2, the Apostle Paul speaking, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12, 1. Romans 12, 2, and secondarily, be not conformed to the pattern of this world. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might know what is that good, well-pleasing, and perfect will of God, or the good, better, and best will of God, or the 30-fold, the 60-fold, and the 100-fold will of God, or the body, soul, and spirit. The outward man, the inward man, you see, everything seems to be in threes, and we're going to see all kinds of threes tonight, because you are a three-part being. You're a trichotomous being, that's a theological term, trichotomy, tri meaning three, trichotomous being, you're a trichotomy. Guess what? We've got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're made in His image and likeness. Whose image and likeness? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us make man in our image, Genesis 1, 21, 1 Let us make man in our image, in our likeness. Who's the us? He wasn't talking about the angels. He's talking about us. Right. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us, because we're one in unity, it's not one plus one plus one equals three. It's one times one times one equals one. The Son... We can see it in the sky, can't we? We also see light comes off of it, and we can also feel the warmth. Is the sun three different things? No, but the sun is one times one times one. It's a physical ball of fire. We can experience the light that shines on darkness, and we also experience the heat that emanates from it. Thank God for the sun. Amen. H2O, what is it? Well, it's water. Thank you. What is ice? Well, that's H2O also. Well, thank you for that affirmation. But what about steam? Well, that's H2O also. So, wait a second. Is H2O three or is it one? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever looked out on a lake and it's cool in the morning and it's winter time? and you see ice floating in the water and there's steam over the lake. Well, which one of those is H2O? And the answer is yes. All of them. <laughs> so, you are a spirit, you have a soul, and you live in a body. But what if I separate your soul from your spirit? What? Or if I separate your body? The minute I separate your body, you're with Jesus. Because to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And we get a new heavenly body. The terrestrial puts on the celestial. The temporal puts on the eternal. The natural puts on the spiritual. When you're transformed out of this body, you get a new one in the twinkling of an eye, in an instant. Remember when Jesus came back and he could walk through walls? <clears throat> Yet he said these words. He said... Thomas, it is me. 
Come touch me. Put your fingers in my side and the nail prints in my hands. And he said, my Lord and my God. Point. Did Jesus have a new body? Yes. The corruptible put on the incorruptible. So when he rose from the dead, he rose with a new body. You're a three-part being. You're made in his image and likeness. One times one times one equals one. We serve one God. We don't serve multiple gods. We're not polytheistic, meaning poly meaning many. We're monotheistic, mono meaning one. You're not three people. If you are, we'll cast a couple out. Okay? Amen. I'll guarantee you it's probably not you. It's probably some friends that you picked up on the way. Come out in the name of Jesus. Oh, you're back to normal. Okay? We communicate with God through our spirit. And God's spirit communicates with us through our spirit, which is your inner man. And when he communicates, he speaks to your spirit and you sense the words rise up or bubble up into your soul, which is your mind, will, and emotions. And then once you understand what he said, you tell your body where you're going. Here's the problem with much of the body of Christ. They have not trained their spirit to hear the voice of the Lord. That's it, that's it. But their soul is well acquainted. And their flesh is well acquainted with the voice of the world and the enemy. And they're easily manipulated in their emotions. But tonight we're drawing a line in the sand and we're going to say no more to the world, the flesh, and the devil. See those three? But we're going to say yes to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. And we're going to be led by the Spirit and we're going to grow up. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 verse 11 says, When I was a child... I spake as a child, I understood as a child, and I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. People come to me and they say to me, they say, David, the Lord spoke this to me. I said, really? Where does that line up with the scripture? Well, I know it was God. Well, show me in the word, and then let's reason together. Because the subject the prophets are subject that others will listen and validate or refute. Well, I don't care what you say. I know I heard God. Well, is it established in the mouth of two or three witnesses? Well, I heard God. Then they go off and do what they think God said, which was contrary to the work of God, contrary to the fruit of God, the nature of God, the character of God, the word of God. What voice did they hear? They either heard the voice of the flesh, the voice of the world, or the voice of the devil. And once they obeyed that word, there was a result that was contrary to what the Bible says will happen when we're led by the Spirit. Now you get some other people that really have heard from heaven, and it's a contrary instruction to the natural. And the first time you hear it, one of two things will happen. Either your flesh will be like, oh no, that's scary. And you'll pray through it and the Holy Spirit will say, yeah, that's me. David, go fight Goliath. Oh, by the way, don't bring any armor with you. It's cool. <laughs> Hosea. I won't even go with Hosea where God told what Hosea did. That was a tough one. Jonah, go preach unto Nineveh. That wicked city. I'm not going there. Ananias. Go lay hands on Saul of Tarsus. For he's a chosen vessel of mine. Uh, I rebuke you, Satan. <laughs> Saul's out killing Christians. <laughs> and I'm on the list. I saw it. You know, ten most wanted. Ananias. And Saul signed the paperwork. I'm not going to lay hands on him. <laughs> Be led by the Spirit, and you'll see great fruit. Go to China. Go to Africa. Are you sure, Lord? It's biblical. Go into all the world and preach. But the Lord will give you confirmation signs, won't he? And the other thing that you'll get 